The opinions expressed in the following program are provided for general information purposes only and should not be construed as advice from CJAD 800 or Bell Media. Listeners should always consult their own real estate agent with questions or concerns. The following is sponsored content. The Real Estate Show on CJAD 800. Your real estate and mortgaging questions answered with Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages. Here's your host, Chantal Desjardins. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Real Estate Show featuring Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages and chartered mortgage broker, myself, Chantal Desjardins, now in for Terry this week. It's his partner in crime and president of Northeast Realties, Eleni Akros. Hello. Hi, Chantal. How you doing? Happy uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend. Yeah, to you too. You wearing your green? I'm trying. I like it. It's just one cardigan. It's not like super fun, but it's, you know. That's what I got. <laughs> I do only have one t-shirt as well. And if this ever goes, like I almost couldn't find it this morning. Yeah. So then it would just be you sporting the green. It's a good thing. It's good. It's good. It's green. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a little green beer on their Sunday. Uh, do you do? Do you do that? Do you do the green beer thing? Never tried it. Never. No. I Neither don't do. I. I don't do beer well. So ah, so green beer. It have to help. be like green coffee or green tea. Sounds disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a beer drinker. I'm not a green drink person. No. Like think of green, a green slush. A, green slush or no. green. Uh, you know the healthy drinks. Green. Oh, drink okay. Your greens. Okay. Yeah, you have do. me on that. If uh, maybe they'll be serving that at like Hurley's after the yeah. show. I don't think so, though. We're (laughs) live uh, every Sunday here on CJD from 1 to 2 p.m., and you can watch us on Facebook Live. We set it up. It's been on for about 27 minutes now. (laughs) People have been watching us get ready for the show. Yeah. Uh, Head head over to either we're going to have it on Terry Kalakos' Facebook page. Right now it's on Eleni's Facebook page, and you can check it out on mine, uh, and you can uh, follow along. You can watch uh, us with our green shirts, and that's, uh, I think, enticement enough to head over there. Yeah. On the show today, Montreal uh, Real Estate, it continues to heat up. Record number of sales and price growth in certain areas. And today we're going to talk about selling your property in this hot seller's market and what to expect when your phone rings when you're on the air. <laughs> well, I'll be do that. Give us a call with any of your real estate agent, with any of your real estate questions at 514-790-0800 or text us at 514-800. Let's kick things up with a market update. I'll go turn your phone off. Okay, well, good. Yeah. <laughs> So we left our phone on during the live. uh, Sorry about that. So for the market update, uh, I don't want to get into uh, the stats too much because typically what I'm hearing from people and I'm seeing on Facebook, people are always asking about areas. Um, But just before that, I I just want to talk a little bit about the condo market. Uh, A lot of our colleagues are working uh, in the new construction. Uh, Those are on fire. Uh, So you have a lot of developments downtown, the Yule. Um, You know, they're they're all they're all on, on fire basically right now. Um, But other than the Montreal, the downtown condos, which everybody knows, uh, you know, hears about often, uh, there's also actually Laval, which which is doing really, really well. So Laval condos actually have increased and um, the sales are are going up in Laval. So it's just not uh, not just the island of Montreal. Um, So that's for condos. what basically what's happening in Montreal is, uh, you know, things are heating up, like we said. So what are the areas that we're seeing? Um, th- you know, that's that's the question I always get. And also the prices. So prices are going up. Uh, what are the areas that uh, that are still affordable? So here's the areas that we're seeing um, seller's market because you're hearing there's a seller's market, mm-hmm. uh, Chantal. It's not necessarily everywhere. OK, it is across the board in Quebec. Uh, contrary to the rest of Canada, just to, to talk about a little bit as well. And why is that? Why was the rest of the Canada? The rest of not Canada, Vancouver, up? Toronto, if you you know look at the stats, are actually down when they compare themselves to the previous year. And Quebec, as usual, we're always different, and we follow kind of after <laughs> the rest of the market. We are up. But is it because uh, the rest of Canada, everything's so high, anyway? Some of these big markets. Well, and yeah, now it's I mean, right. trying to catch up. Exactly. So it went it went too high. You know, the foreign tax uh, came in in Toronto and Vancouver. Everybody just literally head over, you know, just came here and started buying. Right. And um, so, so yeah, so that's one of the reasons. But I would probably say the prices are still really interesting mm. in Quebec. And so you have uh, a lot of uh, students buying or their parents helping them buy. So foreign students. Yeah, let's students. be real. When I was a student, I had no money to buy property. Yeah, so not the actual students, but you, but uh, the stats are coming out that um, it's, there's a lot of parents buying. And we see it. We see it on, on the ground that, uh, you know, we're... we're helping parents buy for their, uh, right. their students who are going to be here, right, for a couple of years in university. And instead of them renting, the parents want to invest because Montreal is a great place to invest. Imagine having that when you're, my yeah. parents didn't offer to buy me a place. They're well, like, good luck out there. Yeah. Not, not the same, Not right? the case anymore. Yeah. That's great. 
Yeah. So that's it. So, um, so in terms of area now, you, you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're not just assuming that you're in a seller's market. You, you have to get the right info. So here's the areas for single family homes that are in real seller's market. So real seller's market means that there's more buyers than there are homes. So inventory, inventory is really low. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'll throw a number out at you. Uh, Point Claire has 2.6 months of inventory. Okay, so that's just a stat. It just means there's, you know, homes are typically only staying on the market for two and a half months. And that's a very quick turnover. Very quick, right? So Point Claire, number two, Kirkland, Beaconsfield, um, Borough of Cotonege, NDG, Montreal West, DDO, uh, Greenfield Park in the South Shore, uh, Nuns Island, Dorval, and Rosemount. Those are the top 10 seller markets mm. right now for single homes. A lot of West Island stuff. A Why? lot of West Island. Why is that? Uh, there's a demand for West Island as always. And again, because the demand is still there or growing, right. uh, but there's not enough homes, this is what's what's driving this seller's market. Um, but it is, again, area by area and depending on the type of property. So if we talk about condos, uh, for example, it's... You know, it's more balanced, but there are certain areas that are more, and we haven't seen this in Montreal for years now, seller's market for condos. It's, it's unheard mm-hmm. of. Uh, so we have Outremont, you have DDO, Rosemount, Boucherville in the South Shore, uh, Verdun, Plateau, uh, Southwest, uh, Sudwest area, Anjou, Vaudreuil. Vaudreuil is very, very popular for condos. Uh, and Ile des Sœurs again. Mm-hmm. So again, you see, it's not the same uh, markets for condos and, and uh, single homes. And then we have Plexus, which is also a little bit different. So for Plexus, the top 10 selling markets, seller markets are Verdun, Rosemount, St. Leonard, Anjou, uh, Sud-Ouest, uh, Abitibi in Val d'Or, Cotonège NDG, uh, Hochelaga Maisonneuve, very popular for Plexus, mm. um, Abitibi again, Royan Noranda, and uh, Laval des Rapides. So you see it's not the same list, right, for the right. Plexus. There's, so it's really the, about the supply and the demand for what's so what's the type of property that you have and what is the demand in your area for that type of property right because it seems like a lot of families want to move out for the houses out in the the west island whereas yes. the, the plexes are kind of the up and cr- coming you know uh exactly south west that kind of stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly cool good to know good to know um do you have anything else for the market update uh Maybe. there is well there's the prices right. also so the, the prices have increased again it's case by case depending on the type of property and the area. Um, let's see what's um, which areas increase the most. Um, okay, so look for single homes. Again, we have you know some of them are repeating. Dorval, Beaconsfield, Kirkland are the top three. Why are they the top three? Because if you if you, if you just do a quick search on on Centris MLS uh, for a Dorval home, I was working with a client about three weeks ago. Uh, we had a choice of maybe three homes, <laughs> you know, so in their budget, what they were looking for, a three not bedroom house, you know, under, I don't know, under 400,000, there was not right. a lot that came up. So why have the prices gone up? Well, the demand has gone up, the supply has gone down. So mm. it's pretty simple formula. Um, the other thing is, um, we have some areas that remain to be the most, um, uh, expensive areas in Montreal. Typically these are always the same and it's still the case. So you have Westmount. Outremont, Hampstead, TMR, Nuns Island, uh, followed by Plateau, Ville-Marie, Downtown, Côte neige NDG, Montreal West, and then Beaconsfield. So that those are the most expensive areas. Um, and just to note, all of this, you know, seller's market that you're reading about and uh, prices going up, it's mainly concentrated on the island of Montreal. Okay. Right. So when you're talking, and so even and specifically certain areas, when you're talking about Laval, South Shore, it's they're still hot markets, but not necessarily uh, full blown sellers markets. Now that is the voice of Eleni Akravos, president of Northeast Realties. Now you're so popular that people are actually calling you to go out and see houses right now, right? Is that what's that's what's happening? Well, it's not. Yeah, it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably the sun, right? So every year, this is what happens. March break, as soon as the sun comes out fully, like you, you have sun for a full day or two. Um, I'm seeing it on Facebook yesterday. On, I was just posting on West Island uh, community page, and there were so many people asking, what are the commission rates right now? Uh, who can recommend a real estate broker in the right. West Island? And there were just tons of comments. 
It's just the time that everybody's looking to sell so and if, buy. And if move. you've got Eleni's uh, cell phone number, don't call yeah. her for the next hour or it's going <laughs> to ring on the air. Uh, but you can call us did here we, at Did five... we turn it off? No, yeah. you're going to have to go do it. Okay. 514-790-0800 or text us at 514-800. Uh, of course, Eleni Akervos, president of Northeast Realties, in for her partner, Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages. You're tuned in to The Real Estate Show on CJAD 800 with Chantal Desjardins and Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages. Welcome back. The Real Estate Show here on CJD. We've got Eleni Akravos, president of Northeast Realties, and for her partner, Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages. If you've got a question, anything to do with real estate, either uh, about our topic today, selling in a seller's market, what do you have to do different than if it were a buyer's market? Call us, 514-790-0800, or text us at 514-800, or even anything about real estate. We will answer your questions here on The Real Estate Show. Now, uh, the market, we've decided it is a hot market for sellers uh, you'd think that would just be all good for sellers, right? Buyers are, you know, you got to do things a little bit differently, but sellers have to do things differently too. It's not just you put it on, you ask way more money and you get it. That's basically the bottom line here. So we're going to talk about, you know, what you have to do differently if you are a seller and, you know, how to maximize what you're, what you're asking for and what you're getting. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not as um, straightforward as people think. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask more. I'm going to put up the sign. Uh, it's going to be easy. Okay, so it's not necessarily easier. You may, yes, sell faster, um, but you have to have a plan. Mm-hmm. So just as an example, where, where are you going to go? So where are you going to go? You got to live somewhere. Yeah. So there's a lot of, there are a lot of planning and strat- strategizing uh, that goes along with selling in a, in a seller's market um, that you have to think about. So the first thing really is you have to team up with a real estate broker. So I was, I was mentioning off air before that uh, on Facebook, there's a West Island community group and, uh, and I'm starting to see it, you know, this week, all the questions, can anybody recommend a real estate broker? Uh, what are the going commission rates right now? You know, everybody has all these questions. So, um, and, and that's good. You should have questions and mm-hmm. you shouldn't just jump in and say, you know, let, let's just do this quickly. Right. Um, you should be meeting with at least one to three real estate brokers and asking the right questions to make sure that you're, you're, you're starting on the right foot. And what are some of these questions that you should be asking? Well, first of all, I mean, if, you know, when you're meeting with a real estate broker, you want to make sure you're, you know, connecting with this person. And uh, it's, it's not more what you're asking, but what they're asking you. Mm. Okay. So when I meet with, uh, with a seller, um, it's mostly them talking for the first hour. It's not me talking because Uh, I have to find out, you know, what's your story? So you're looking to sell. First of all, is there a real purpose for selling? And just because it's a seller's market, is it a good time for you in your situation to sell? And if you're going to be selling, are you open to renting, for example? Because we may not be able to find you a house. Um, We're seeing it a lot. A lot of, uh, you know, clients have sold and they're not able to find something to move into. So do you have an exit strategy? So these are the questions I'm asking you as a seller. Are you prepared to, you know, go rent for a couple of months and then find something? Do you have your pre-approval in order for you to buy something? Uh, Are you prepared for the whole process of, you know, having tons of visits in your house? Where are you going to go when people are visiting? So there's, there's really a planning process. So that first meeting, which is the consultation, um, you know, it's really the broker should be getting to know your situation and then coming up with a plan or a proposal of, okay, here's what we can do in your situation. Here's the best way to sell. Here's, um, you know, along with the, the, the pricing, which we'll talk about after, you know, um, evaluating your property. The first thing is really to find out the needs. Uh, of course, as a seller, you're going to have questions about commission and all that stuff. Okay. As a side note, f- for me, that comes at the end. So I'll listen to what you have, what you need as a seller. Let me put together a plan for you, see if it works. And then after we can talk about my services, you know, how I can market your property, different commission, um, packages and uh, because commissions just as a side note because I keep seeing it on Facebook people keep asking about it it should be the last thing that you're talking about because at the end of the day it's you know how well are you gonna are you gonna sell is the real estate broker gonna take care of the whole transaction for you so that you're not stressed are they gonna be there to show your property that's a that's a question that you should be asking shouldn't they normally well, that's what people think, but a lot of real estate brokers, everybody works differently. So even if you interview three brokers from the same office, they each have their own method of working, team, you know, whatever they mm. offer. And so sometimes you list a property and you haven't asked that question. And as a seller, you're stuck at your house opening the door Whoa. for potential buyers. Yeah, I would just and assume. That you would just that's assume. Like and so standard. that's just an example of one thing I speak to sellers about. And they're like, well... 
uh, yes, I would be more comfortable if I, I wasn't here. So there's a lot of, you know, all of these little, little things. And in a seller's market, you're going to have tons of visits, more than the normal. Like what's, okay. a, what's a normal amount of uh, visits if you're well, selling a house? In a, in, in a seller's market. So right now we just put up a condo, I don't know, two weeks ago in NDG. It's been nonstop one to two visits every day. And there's a tenant living there. That's another side note. So if there's a tenant, how do we manage the visits? If it's your house, are you going to stay home every day and open the door? You don't want to do that. No. No. We're so, busy. Yeah. So, but you also have to find places to go, right? Right. Um, have the house available. It has to be clean. Clean. It has to be, you know, you have to be able to show it in, it, in its best light. Um, so that's some of the stuff that we're going to get into today, basically. Mm. But the first step really is meeting with a real estate broker, um, figuring out your situation and, and having a plan. So you need a plan to sell. So, you know, for example, uh, and a strategy. So you, are you going to sell in, uh, two months and then you have somewhere to go? Uh, are you going to sell more aggressively? You might sell in a week. Well, what do you suggest? Do you think, do you think it's more important to, you know, find somewhere else to go or to just have it on the market and then just see how it goes? Uh, I have clients right now that are, are doing both. Okay. So I have clients right now who they, they had, they want to sell their house since like last fall, uh, but they're so scared of not finding anything and they have not found anything. So they're still not selling. And that's part of the reason that we have low inventory because people are, there's a little bit of a, of a stagnation because those people are waiting to find something right. before listing. Uh, so in this market, I wouldn't do that right now because you're missing the opportunity to sell and to really benefit from the seller's market. So I would, again, get a plan in place. Look at a lot of people are renting temporarily. Um, again, you know, depending if you have children, a family, it may not always be possible. It depends. Um, and then finding something after. But to really benefit from the from the busy market, uh, you, you want to get on the market. Exactly. You want to put the house. You could also put the house on the market and you can stipulate that the occupancy will be, you know, within 60 days or 90 days or 121 days. To give you a bit of time. Exactly. That's the voice of Eleni Akravos, president of Northeast Realties. Give us a call, 514-790-0800. Text us, 514-800. Or follow us along on Facebook, which it's not ringing anymore because we've turned off the ringer. Yeah. That's what we do here on the real estate exactly. show. <laughs> um, now let's talk about pricing. Um, I would assume that, you know, if it's a seller's market, I can take my condo down here, you know, in the village and I can just be like, I can tag on an extra 50 grand and that's the end of it. Yeah, Not the case. That's what a lot of people uh, think. And actually you, you see it a lot with uh, Duproprio. Yes. Uh, and so uh, it's another hot topic that I'm seeing on Facebook. Everybody's chiming in and some people are saying, oh yeah, you know, I listed with Duproprio and I already have an offer. Uh, and so I would say to them, okay, well, let's see if that offer materializes and actually closes. Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm seeing a lot of uh, homes on Duproprio that as, as real estate brokers, we sell those a lot. Okay. Um, so they're on the market. They put the price at whatever they, they, they feel and they do get visits and sometimes they do get offers. Um, but at the end they don't always materialize because then there's an inspection and then people will want a lower price after the inspection and then they'll back out and change their mind. And so it's not sold yet. So the, the thing about the price is that even in a seller's market, you still need to be realistic. Okay. You can't just ask whatever. There's different strategies though, uh, of pricing. So for example, you, you need to do a proper CMA, which is a comparative market analysis, which most brokers do. Uh, it's similar to what, you know, an appraisal uh, appraiser would do or a bank evaluator when they come to appraise the, uh, the property for, for a mortgage. Uh, it's really, it's really to get a, an idea of what, you know, what is somebody willing to pay for your property in this market? Uh, because we know, we know if there's demand, mm -hmm. you can go a little bit higher. We're talking 2%, 3%, we are not talking, you know, 25, 20%. exactly. So you have to be realistic and you have to know how to price it for each area. So if it's a house in Kirkland, for example, then, you know, again, depending on what's on the market, you have to price it either aggressively. So at the, the, the market value or just a little bit higher, if you're, if you're ready for that, or you price it two to 4% higher. Uh, that's Eleni Akravos. We'll be back with more on selling your property in a hot seller's market after this.
Northeast Mortgages presents The Real Estate Show with Chantal Desjardins and Terry Kalakos, live online and on CJAD 800. Welcome back, everybody. The Real Estate Show featuring Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages and chartered mortgage broker, myself, Chantal Desjardins, again in for Terry this week. It's his partner and president of Northeast Realties, Eleni Akervos. Welcome back. Thanks. So we're talking about uh, the real estate market in Montreal, how it's definitely a seller's market. Uh, and before the break, we were talking about pricing. You can't just add an extra, you know, 50, per- 50 grand, 20%. Like you have to go, you have to know, you have to know your market. You have to know what area you're in. And as well, I was just saying off the air that uh, I find when I'm, you know, creeping on the websites to see what kind of properties are out there. If I see that a property has been there for, you know, a while, mm-hmm. I kind of think, no, that's not as not as attractive. It's kind of like if you're dating and you see a, like a guy that's been single for too long, you're like, <laughs> nobody wants him. You know, whereas if you see like a, a new guy, you're like, no, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I don't know how those websites work, but uh, I'll the stick dating to ones or the real <laughs> I don't know how those work. So, <laughs> but yeah, it could be the same thing, right? Stale. So things get stale. Can we say that? Um, cause you know, the first two weeks of a property being on the market, it's the most important. So that profile, kind of like the dating profile, I guess, Yeah. you know, so the, so your pictures, your pricing, the, you know, your, the way you're presenting the property, the first two weeks uh, on the market, it's the most important. That's where you're going to get your feedback. That's where you're going to know how many people are coming. Uh, is it working? Right. And then right after the two week mark, that's when we actually adjust so we don't, you know, this is not the type of market where you're adjusting and we see this sometimes like four months later, you've lost the boat. People, you know, have limited attention span and they do wonder like you, oh, why has it been on the market mm-hmm. for four months? And the other thing is that buyers know now they have access to information. Uh, they're working with a real estate broker who's giving them the pricing or the solds in the area. So everything that the market, that the market's tighter now, everybody knows what's going on. So you better make sure that your price, your as the seller, you have the upper hand. You know your pricing. Are you pricing aggressively? And you can market it that way. So when we market a property that is price to sell, quote unquote, that's mm-hmm. something you're going to hear a lot. Price to sell means it's been evaluated and it's priced close to either at or just really close to the market value, what what we know that somebody's willing to pay. So when you as a buyer, as when a buyer sees that, um, usually they're aware of it. They know. So sellers shouldn't be, be, don't be scared to price aggressively. If you are scared, then take a more progressive strategy, which is you price three to 4% above the price, the market price, but be ready to adjust after the two, three weeks if things aren't happening. Don't stay right. there, adjust it, tweak the price, and go go along with the market um, so that you stay relevant. People, and as soon as you change the price, it kind of revamps uh, your listing. Because I've had friends before that maybe haven't followed this advice and they're like, well, I don't really need to sell. Why don't I put it way over value and just yeah. like see what happens and it'll stay on the market like a year. But yeah. that's not a great strategy, right? Well, we, we see those, right? Uh, not as often, but we see that it's called testing the market and yeah. you're just putting yourself out there. Uh, I'll give you an example. I was just visiting, um, you know, duplexes in Montreal, yes, uh, Montreal West yesterday. There's two duplexes on Hudson Street. Okay, in Montreal West, mm-hmm. one is asking seven thirty, one is asking six forty. I big mean, jump. that's a big jump, right? And it's the same property; it's the same type of property built the same year. And that's got to be tough for the the higher asking if the, like the guy with the it six, is. But whatever. for some reason, you know, the the higher one, you know, wants wants more. And that's the other thing when you're when you're listing a property, you can't just put it up and that's it. You have to be working with a broker who is actively every week. So we do a weekly market update on our listings. If somebody else comes up on the market on your street and they're asking 20000 less, even though you did the market update and you priced correctly, you may or may not need to adjust depending on if, you know, the other house is comparable, more or less renovated. Yes. But you can't just sit on the market and just wait. You, you right. need to be watching the market every week and make sure you're relevant, your photos, you know, everything has to has to stay current. Right. Can't get stale. Sounds stressful. <laughs> Sounds stressful. Dating yeah. and real estate. Yeah, it's a little stressful. Yeah, it could be stressful for sellers and that... That's the whole point is that selling in a seller's market, you think, oh, it's going to go fast, but it is stressful because you have to be on top of your game. Well, luckily, you're going to do something <laughs> to alleviate some of the stress. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, <laughs> what are you going to so, do? So look, that's honestly, that's the way that we work. It's our philosophy, uh, myself, as well as the, you know, the team of brokers that I work with. Our goal is really to try to, to, to minimize the stress and make it as smooth as possible, even though it's, you know, we, we see that, that buyers and Everything's kind of getting more complicated. So, I mean, we have a, we have a lot of different packages that we offer. Uh, one of the things we're doing right now is if you're going to be moving or offering uh, $500 towards your moving. Uh, another thing which we're going to get into very uh, you know, soon is the seller's inspection. 
And that's something we started in 2017. And that was to take the stress away of buyers backing out after the inspection. Uh, we've started uh, actually incorporating um, inspections for sellers. Um, I know a lot, you know, a lot of brokers offer it to, uh, to sellers and, and they usually have the sellers pay for it. We actually include it in our packages. Right. And um, we've only received great feedback from our sellers because what happens is the sellers know right away um, you know, the, the product that they're selling. So you've lived in a home for 10, 20 years, I don't know, five, 10 years. Uh, you don't necessarily know what's in the attic or right. you, know, you don't you know just, if there's mold in the, you in don't the know walls. all that stuff. So right. that's, that's, I think, uh, you know, the next thing we're going to talk about is, is really the, the process mm -hmm. that goes on when you, when you put up the house for sale. And then you're, what, what is this, uh, moving fees? You're giving them a little... Oh, the moving fees, yeah. I mean, that's just a little <laughs> promo just to help people out. We're offering $500 towards their moving. That's awesome. Yeah. Why not? Right? Yeah. Help Good. people out. I like it. So if you if you if they call you after the show, they can they yeah, get this five hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh you can call us right now, by the way, at five one four seven nine oh oh eight hundred or text us at five one four eight hundred. That's the voice of Eleni Akravos. And right now we've got Elizabeth on the line with a question about selling. Elizabeth? Hi. Hi. My que my question very interesting and I'm sorry Terry's not there. I like listening to him too. <laughs> but Eleni's <laughs> great too. Yeah, he I, yes, exactly. But he's special, <laughs> right? He'll okay, be back. question. With the upcoming banning of wood-burning fireplaces, what would you recommend? I mean, will it be a liability? Like, I'm looking here, and my fireplace is like half a wall. It's a big brick stone mm. fireplace. Yeah. Now, one of my friends said uh, that she suggested that I would be smart to convert it to gas, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, when I would come to sell, it, I wouldn't leave it open for somebody to say, oh, look, in fact, I have two fireplaces. Yeah. You know, so we I don't want... Often. Yeah, I don't want it to be uh, a liability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So we see that often in West Island, you know, um, other areas as well. So there's a few different uh, things that you can do with a fireplace. So uh, one, you can either basically, uh, so when you, when you sell a home, you fill out a seller's declaration mm -hmm. and you say, okay, I have two fireplaces. I haven't, you declare when the last time you cleaned them out or used them. And you would basically in the sale say, look, you know, I haven't used them. I don't know if it works. You sell the property with a fireplace without legal warranty. Um, it's not necessarily a liability, but it just means that the, it's going to be up to the buyer at that point to decide if they want to keep it, if they want to convert it. That's another thing you could do that you mentioned. Number two is you can convert it into a, a gas fireplace. Of course, that's going to cost you as a seller certain you know, money, mm -hmm. but it's going to add a certain amount of value. But again, you have to look at the whole house. So if the whole house renovated, does it make, sure, it make sense to put in this money? Are the buyers going to appreciate this gas fireplace, uh, you know? So you well, have to thing, look at everything. Yeah, as you know, we will. We are not allowed. I mean, mm -hmm. as of October, right? Yeah, we have to do something with them. So I don't want to just put a, a bowl of flowers in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, again, you you can in the sense that you know you're not obligated to do anything with it. The the, the municipalities are just saying that you're not able to use it as it is right now. They're not but saying I'm passing on yeah. something that somebody won't be able to use. Is what I mean. Yeah, and so that's it. You can either pass it on like that and say mm -hmm. it's without legal warranty. Buyers, you can do what you'd like to it because some. A lot of people now are, you know, they're breaking down walls, renovating. Some people don't want fireplaces at all. Right. Yeah. Right. So this is what I'm saying. So you can sell it like like that and then the buyer will take care of it or you can you can uh, convert it. What do you mean by legal liability? I don't understand. That. So what happens is in the in the contract, when you sell the property, you basically say that you're selling the fireplace without any legal warranty. And so you're you're removing yourself of any liability. And she can Elizabeth can give you a call. right? Yeah, of course. At, uh, yeah. But they're well. I mean, the fireplace works very well. I mean, it's, I use it all the time. Yeah. So yeah, then exactly. you declare that you use it, but you can still sell it without legal warranty. So people can't come back to you for anything. Elizabeth, thank you for the call. Give her a call uh, after the after the show. If you have any more questions, not on her cell phone right now, because that's. Yeah, it's gonna ring on the show. But five one four six eight zero four six seven four. Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, okay, we're gonna we're, we're gonna get to Michelle's call after this about uh, hidden defect responsibilities. You're tuned into the Real Estate Show on CJAD eight hundred with Chantal Desjardins and Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages. Welcome back to the Real Estate Show. Typically featuring Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages and chartered mortgage broker. Myself, Chantal Desjardins, but in for Terry this week. Because uh, I assume Terry's at the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade and the post-green beer festivities. Got to turn your 
Yep. My gun, we're good. <laughs> but Terry's missing out because we're having a lot of fun here. Uh, we were just talking about, uh, Elizabeth called in about the fireplace and what you're supposed to do if you should, you know, mm-hmm. change it or if you just throw a bowl of flowers and hope for the best. And you're saying this is, this is a, a popular topic. Like, you get this a lot. It's very popular. And it's, again, one of the reasons why we offer sellers now to do a seller's inspection of the home. We include it in our packages because we want the sellers to feel confident about what they're selling. So if you've lived in a home for you know, a certain amount of years, you may not know, you know, bylaws have changed. You you don't know what you're selling. You Mm -hmm. need to know the good, bad, and the ugly, I call it, about your house so that you can actually either repair if you want to repair some stuff or declare, declare to the buyers, my house needs brickwork. It needs, it has two cracks. It has this, it has that. And the buyers will not after, you know, be able to necessarily back out for those things. Okay. Um, Because you have to let them know if there's stuff that needs to be done or you have to let them know about the things that you know. And so most sellers, this is, a, you know, they don't know. But isn't know. ignorance bliss then? You don't want to know? And you yes just kind and of... no. Ignorance is not bliss because when the buyers come with their inspector and they're there for three, four hours and they, you know, discover, you know, and some, sometimes they discover things that aren't normal. Cracks in a Montreal home with these, these uh, um, the weather we have here, it's kind of normal to a certain extent. So if you declare these in advance, you know what's going on as a seller, uh, you're going to save yourself a lot of stress uh, afterwards. Guys, give us a call, 514-790-0800, or text us at 514-800. We have Michelle on the line. Michelle, you have a question about a hidden defect. Hi. Hi, Hi ladies. Hi. Happy Patty's Day. Thanks, you too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just curious, as you brought up the topic about, you know, uh, you've been living in the house for, let's say, five years. You sell it. You don't necessarily know. And then somebody purchases your house, you have a legal warranty, and they start renovating the house. And then they start discovering things that you had no idea. What is the seller's responsibility, one? And does the broker have any responsibility in that? Good two? question, That Michelle. is such a good question, actually. And it, it, it ties into the, the inspection uh, thing we were talking about. Um, so number one, I mean, you know, the 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 hidden defect, it's a... It's, uh, you know, it's a huge topic. We can do a whole show just on hidden defects. Um, so it does happen often. People start renovating, like you said. Uh, the hidden, first of all, the hidden defect itself needs to be, you know, um, like it needs to be um, um, explained exactly what it is. So a hidden defect is something that nobody would have known. So you as the seller would not have known. The inspector would not have seen it uh, or mentioned it. The buyers would not have seen it. Neither would the, you know, any of the of the brokers involved. So, like, what kind of defects would you find? It? So, I'll give you an example. I mean, it, you know, it's it's a there are gray zones. Okay, and this is where you know lawyers come into play, and then you know the court system. But what? So, I'll give you an example. I had a client who uh, who uh, we, they bought a condo in a plateau area, and they knew that they were going to be doing doing the kitchen right away. They started ripping up the floor in the kitchen, and in the floor underneath the you know the boards, there was some mold. So they can, they, it was easy, easy. They were able to go back to the, to the previous seller. So the seller's responsibility is basically if, if the defect, okay, was not known, not declared. Um, and basically you can prove that that defect, you would have either paid a little less for the house, um, or not purchased the house, you know, mm-hmm. given this defect, you mm-hmm. have the, a buyer has the right to go back to the previous seller and even previous sellers and so forth, um, basically to cover that that issue so for example in this case there was mold in the floor uh they they wrote a letter took pictures to the old uh to the old seller and said look we found mold we need to just get it removed are you are you willing to pay because they can prove that the mold was there you know when the previous seller was an owner right so the, the seller agreed in that case it ended well uh but it has to be something that you can prove you have to prove that that d- defect mm-hmm. existed in the property when you were the seller. So this is not always easy. It's not black Definitely and white. Gray zone. Okay, it's really a gray zone. Um, but basically, what I would say is the most important thing for a broker to do, for a seller to do, and this is why we're doing it now, is to get an inspection done on your property when you're selling. Why? Because as a seller, you're protecting yourself. As yeah. a broker, I'm protecting myself because I'm selling a property that I have all the information on. For sure. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, give give uh, Eleni a call at 514-680-4674 if you have any more questions about hidden defects. Now we have Sam in Montreal. Sam, hi. Hi. Uh, I'm just wondering if uh, with the postal season being in the military, if you have any packages that are geared towards the military? Oh, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. 
Um, well, listen, I mean, we have, we have different options for, for, um, like I said, selling it because everybody's situation is different. It's very hard to, to see people on Facebook saying, oh yeah, you know, commission rates are 5% or 4%. It, it, it's, you know, things have evolved in the real estate industry now. And so, um, we usually, we usually tweak packages also to people. So, I mean, honestly, uh, I would say, uh, get in touch with me, email me or, or call me and I'd be really uh, glad to have a conversation with you and, and maybe we'll, we'll set something up. Okay. Thank you. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Sam. Uh, so we're almost out of time. Lots of calls today. So uh, mm-hmm. let's let's quickly talk about the last couple of P's here. Preparing. Uh, is there even time to prepare a property for sale with, you know, how fast things are moving? Yeah. Well, preparing is something that we always recommend. So, you know, decluttering to a certain point, uh, a little bit of home staging if you need it. It's not always possible. Like I said, it's case by case. Some people really, you know, need to sell and don't have time. Um, some brokers would argue, you know what, just get the house up on the market. Don't even, don't even prepare. Uh, we believe that, you know it's, what, it's, it's worth it. To... It's all in the preparation. Right. And so sometimes we'll prepare a house. We meaning, you know, between the broker and the, you know, the clients in, in, uh, in partnership will take two weeks to prepare the house. But when it goes up, it's like the pictures are perfect. The price is perfect. The presentation is perfect. That's the three P's that you need to sell properly. Um, and so when it goes out, it goes, it, you know, your, your home goes up with a bang the first week and you get, you get the best results like that. And just quickly process then the usual process when a property goes up. So, you know, you're going to follow the normal process of, like we said, you know, filling out your paperwork, seller's declaration, all that stuff. But again, in a seller's market, um, we've, we've, tweaked our process a bit. So again, like I'm going to, you know, repeat it and repeat it, but we've added the, the inspection for sellers. Um, but just, just know that the process will take time and, and ask your broker what the process is. So you're prepared again for the visits, for the multiple offers, for what's to come. Um, you, you have to be prepared uh, mentally for all this stuff. <laughs> well, thank you, Eleni. It's been great. Yeah. Very thanks, fun. Chantel. Uh, Eleni Akravos, uh, if you want to reach Eleni or if you want to reach Terry Kalakos at Northeast Mortgages, give them a call 514-680-4674. Or if you missed part of the show or just want to hear it again or see our green shirts for St. Patrick's Day weekend, you can head over to Eleni's uh, Facebook profile or mine and you can uh, check out the video on Facebook Live. We will see you next week, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. The opinions expressed in the preceding program were provided for general information purposes only and should not be construed as advice from CJAD 800 or Bell Media. Listeners should always consult their own real estate agent with questions or concerns. The preceding was sponsored content.